What's up everybody? I'm gonna show you how I built a bonfire pool heater for around $120. It's a pretty simple, cheap, and effective way to heat your pool. In the first part of this video, I'll run through the schematic and how it works. Then if it seems like something practical that you can build, I'll show you later in the video exactly how I built mine. So what you see on the screen here is a typical pool circuit. Water is gonna go through your skimmer, into your pump, through your filter, and then back into your pool. It's a simple closed loop circuit. Now to build the pool heater, we're gonna have to make some modifications to this. First, we're gonna disconnect the return line from the filter. Then I'll show you how to build a custom diverter valve. You're going to need an additional return line to connect this diverter back to your filter. Then from the final leg of the diverter, we're gonna run a garden hose into your yard somewhere where you have a fire pit available. We're going to have to buy a coil and make some modifications and I'll show you where to get this. The garden hose will connect to one end and then the other end of the coil, you'll have a tube running back into your pool. So at this point, all you've done is instead of having one return line, you now have two return lines. It's still a closed loop circuit. You're not adding or subtracting any water from the pool. The flow works the same way. Water's gonna go through your skimmer, into your pump, through your filter, down the return line. At this point, it would normally just go back into the pool, but now it'll go in two directions through this custom diverter valve that we're going to build. A percentage of that is going to go right back into your pool as cold water return, and then the remainder is gonna go through the garden hose, through the coil, through the tube. Then at this point, it's pretty obvious, we're just gonna light a bonfire, heat up the coil to give you your hot water return. So if this seems like something practical that you would like to build, stay tuned and I'll show you how I built mine. Here I have laid out all of the materials that you'll need for this project. Everything can be purchased at a local home improvement store such as a Lowe's, Home Depot, or Ace Hardware. The only thing you'll need to get online is the stainless steel coil and I'll show you later when we get to that portion of the video exactly which one I purchased. First, I started off with one and a half inch PVC pipe. I cut that into two three and a half inch lengths and one three inch length. I then glued together a one and a half inch PVC ball valve to a one and a half inch T using the three inch length of pipe and then used the three and a half inch lengths of pipe to come out the ball valve and out the front of the T. It's important to orient the ball valve relative to the T at a 90 degree angle so that when it's all assembled, it looks something like this. Next, I purchased flexible reducing couplings to go from one and a half inch PVC to one and a half inch tube. This is specific to how my pool is set up. You might need to do something a little bit different, but I just tightened these onto the lengths of PVC pipe that I had. I then found a sink pipe with a one and a half inch OD I cut this into two three and a half inch lengths and then I tightened those into the other end of my flexible reducing coupling. Next you'll need to purchase a bushing that goes to one half inch female threads and get a garden hose converter that has one half inch threads. You're going to glue the bushing into the last end of the T and then thread in the garden hose converter. And this is the final assembly of your custom diverter valve. Moving on to the coil, I was able to find one that I really liked a lot on a website called nybrewsupply.com. It works well for this application because it's made of stainless steel so it won't melt in the bonfire. It's half inch OD by 50 foot long so that gives the water plenty of travel to heat up. It's 16 inch outer diameter, which is great because I have a rather small fire pit. And lastly, I like that it's not physically constrained by any welds or wires or anything because we are going to need to make some modifications to its shape. The first modification you'll need to make is you'll need to unroll each leg of the coil approximately two and a half feet. To do this, you'll just need to press down with some force and literally unroll the coil. You don't want to just try to bend it because you could put a kink in it and then ruin it. And the purpose of this is to keep the hose connections away from the fire. 
Next, what I did is I got some steel wire and I wove this in between each coil to sort of space it out a bit. This will help keep the bonfire together inside the coil, allow for some convective heat transfer, and also provide more oxygen to the fire. Next, we'll need to connect our garden hose and our tube to our coil. To do this, I bought clear flexible tubing with half inch inner diameter, and I cut off approximately a six inch length. This, along with a small band clamp, will slide over one end of the coil, and you'll just tighten that down like so. Then you'll need to get a female garden hose converter with half inch barbs and this will simply press into the other end of the tube. At this point, we're all done with the prep work we need to do inside. Now we can take everything outside and connect it all. So the first thing you need to do outside is turn your pump off to stop the flow of water. You'll also want to turn your valve off on your diverter to prevent water from leaking out of your pool when we connect the return line. The first hose you'll disconnect is the return line from the filter. Now earlier in the video when I was building my diverter I said that I got the reducing couplings in the sink pipe and that that was specific to how my pool is set up. I was referring to the fact that all my hose connections use these band clamps. If yours uses some sort of threaded connection just be aware and get the right fittings when making your diverter. So when you pull the return line off the filter there might be a little bit of leakage, but not much. Hold the return line up and immediately connect that to the leg of the diverter nearest the ball valve, and the closed valve will prevent water from leaking out of your pool. You can then set this on the ground and you'll attach your additional return line to the other leg of the diverter, and then connect the other end of that return line to the filter where you just disconnected the previous return line. Then take the female end of your garden hose and thread this over the last leg of the diverter. Run this out into your yard, somewhere where your fire pit is set up. And take the male end of your garden hose and thread that into the female garden hose adapter that we prepped inside. The other end of the coil, I just used the remaining length of that clear flexible tubing and connected it with a small band clamp. I then unrolled this, laid it through the yard and routed it back into my pool. At this point, everything is connected. If there are no leaks and everything is good, you can turn your pump back on and start yourself a small bonfire. When the fire gets going good enough, you'll put your coil right into the fire pit and then throw some logs inside the coil and build yourself a nice big bonfire. I made a few extra improvements, the first being I used pool noodles around my tube routing back to the pool because this sort of acts as insulation because the ground is a giant heat sink and I don't want to lose heat. I also used a grocery bag with a weight in it to tie the other end of the tube to the bottom of the pool. After a while you'll be able to touch the hose and notice that it's pretty hot and if you look at the water inside the pool you can see that there's piping hot water coming out of the tube. I would say the water in my pool was between 120 and 160 degrees. I was able to heat my pool from 63 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit after only four bonfires. And I have a pretty large pool at 13,500 gallons. One last thing I wanted to mention in this video is that to tear this down, it's very simple and it does not take up that much space in the corner of a shed or in your garage whatsoever. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something in this video. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and stay tuned for the next project.